My name is Mass Sergeant Ivan Marrera, United States Army Special Forces. I was an 18 Delta. I was a Special Forces medic. I've been in Special Forces for 14 years. When I joined the Army in 2001, um, I, was, I joined the Army as a uh, combat medic. I was part of the invasion of Iraq in 2003. And during that time, we had a uh, SF team come through our firebase. I saw them, they're all decked out in their cool uniforms and, and you know, their cool equipment. And I was like, I want to do that. After we got back from Iraq, I went to the Q course. And it took two years to graduate the Q course because the medic course is a year long. After I was uh, selected and went through the Q course and graduated, I was assigned to 1st Battalion, 7th Special Force Group, ODA 7135. I was a junior medic at the time. I actually met my team in Afghanistan. It was an eye-opener. It, it, it had been about four years since I went to combat, and uh, it was a completely different uh, scenario. August 16, 2013, uh, I was driving an uh, MAT vehicle in Kandahar, Afghanistan, on a convoy to conduct a, uh, a combat operation. I was forced off the road by a um, Taliban insurgent with an with a IED vest on. And when I came off the road, I tried to come back on the road. However, I overcompensated, and the vehicle flipped. My driver's side door broke off, and I was knocked unconscious. And when I woke up, the vehicle and the ground had crushed my left hand. Um, I was stuck. My team started to put a tourniquet on me, and my junior medic had to cut my, the rest of my hand off in order to pull me out of the vehicle. Guys are coming over, checking on me, making sure I'm okay, and then and I'm like, where's the bird, where's the bird? And they're like, two mics out, two mics out. out. And, and pass, pass out. out. I ended up in um, San Antonio, Brook Army Medical Center. That second night was a real tough night. I was in real bad pain, I couldn't sleep, and I started to doubt myself. How am I gonna support my family? What does my team think of me? What does my family think of me? You know, what am I gonna do? So I started making goals. I was like, okay, first thing in the morning, I'm going for a walk. <laughs> Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a workout. And then I'm like, okay, that's short term. You know, what are we gonna do next? Hey, you know, we're gonna start rehab. We're gonna get out of here in six months and deploy again. You know, that didn't really happen, but it was a goal, right? <clears throat> so we did a lot of rehabilitation on, on the knee. We, we did a lot of rehabilitation for the shoulder, we st and uh, they were getting me ready to start using prosthetics. It really didn't take very long for me to, to get the hang of using prosthetics, maybe about a week. I was at the um, CFI, Center for the Intrepid, for about 10 months. They did a great job. Their number one concern was making sure I'm, I reached my goals. Occupational therapy, we really focus on, on learning how to uh, do um, small things with, with my prosthetics. Um, one of the big key things that my occupation therapist and I did was um, we, I learned how to tie knots. Every SF guy's got to know how to tie knots, right? So we're tying knots. Uh, I'm learning how to cook with a prosthetic. Um, I'm learning how to make my bed. I'm, you know, I'm just relearning you know, all kinds of stuff. Those are little things that people don't understand when they have both hands. When, when you're doing it one-handed, it, it gets a little difficult. You know, it gets challenging. And then once I, I completed um, everything there, I went back to seventh group, concentrating on strength and conditioning, um, getting me back to, uh, I guess you could say, combat shape. You know, I just, I just wanted to get back to group, and, and I wanted to get back to work. I wanted to, to be a Green Beret again. At one point, it defined who I was, and uh, that was the biggest, biggest thing was I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on, on, on my dream of being a Green Beret. So every day I, I, I get a little stronger, I get a little better. Eight years later, I'm still recovering, you know, both physically, uh, mentally, spiritually. I continue to recover. Every day I, I'm able to let, let go of some anxiety, let go of some memories, let go of something and get my old self back. Every day I get that second chance. You know, I don't want to continue to do that. I want to do something better. So let's move forward and see how we can how we can get better every day. And every day, every day you open your eyes, it's like, all right, I got another chance. And, and I just want to show people that no matter what your situation is, you can overcome it, you can get through it. Your situation does, doesn't define who you are. It's your character, it's your heart, it's what you think of yourself that defines who you are. And 
I've had guys come up and tell me, you know, I've inspired them, I've motivated them, and, and to me that means a lot. To be honest, uh, I'm better for it. I'm a better man now. I'm a better husband. I'm a better father because my my priorities changed. You know, like at first it was just about me and my career and being the best Green Beret medic I could be. But then after my injury, it was like, what's more important, my family or my career? Every Every time I move forward, I'm bringing people with me that need the help that's important to me. I'm just one guy. I'm just, you know, I look at myself as just a regular guy. I'm not anybody special. I just, I'm just too stupid to know how to quit. 